Welcome to the Best Coast Shire Council Report, your weekly update on council news and events. Hi, I'm Lauren Grills. And I'm Steve Fury. Welcome to this week's show, where we'll be talking with Council's Coordinator of Social and Community Planning, Lisa Barham-Lomax, about the Youth Action Plan. But first, let's talk about what happened at last week's Council meeting. Take it away, Steve. Thanks, Lauren. Last week's meeting was certainly a busy one. Uh, the public gallery was packed as there were a lot of items on the agenda that sparked community interest. One of the big decisions that was made at the meeting was not to seek a variation to the rate cap to the 2016-17 financial year, and instead staying with the 2.5% set by the state government in December last year, so really no surprises there. That's right, Steve. Following extensive community consultation, Council acknowledged feedback received clearly indicated there was a desire from the community for Council to prepare a budget that has an average rate increase within the cap. Council will now consider all feedback in preparation of the 2016-17 budget. So the development of the draft budget will also inform further updates to Council's long-term financial plan, which will be continually updated to ensure it reflects the current long-term ambition and expected deliverables of council. So the draft budget will be released for consultation after next month's ordinary council meeting. So that's April. Another item on the agenda that the community are very interested in is the shared pathway in Surf Parade in Inverloch. Council can now commence construction of stage one of the Surf Parade path project in Inverloch after it was given the go-ahead at last week's meeting. Council decided to go ahead with the path project after the results of a geomorphic and ecological report showed the impact of the shared path to be a low risk. The first stage of the project will extend from the end of the existing path near Abbott Street for about 150 metres and it will include a bridge over Air Creek with a viewing platform looking out to sea. Sounds like a good place to stop for a rest if you need one. The estimated cost of stage one of the project is $148,000. Last week's council meeting also saw council endorse a concept design for the Cows Cultural and Community Centre. The chosen design, concept design option one, includes an expanded multi-purpose community hall to 320 square square metres and that'll accommodate 250 seats and a 200 person theatre, enlarged innovative library, art and craft spaces, lifelong learning experiences including a dedicated space for Pickle, that's the Phillip Island Community and Learning Centre, uh, spaces for genealogical and historical societies as well as council customer and visitor services. Council however also resolved to extend the community hall to 360 square metres to accommodate 300 seats but this is only should additional funding become available through fundraising, grants or reduced tender costs as well as to further investigate the issue of fixed versus retractable seating. Okay, well, and at last week's council meeting, the Youth Action Plan was adopted and today we're joined by Council's Coordinator of Social and Community Planning, Lisa Barham-Lomax, to tell us a bit about how the plan was formed and the consultation process we went through. Welcome, Lisa. Thanks, Steve. Uh, Lisa, can you start by telling us a bit about what the Youth Action Plan is? Sure. The Youth Action Plan has been developed over a 12-month period and focuses on young people aged 12 to 25 years living, working or studying in Bass Coast. The plan identifies the aspirations of our young people and their visions for the future. What young people see as their community's assets, strengths and where there are opportunities for improvement. So the plan will provide a framework for how we work with our young people, the broader community as well and agencies who support them in our community for the next four years. It's a fair amount of work that went into it. How was it developed? We had a youth-led steering group called the YAP Pack, which helped direct the youth engagement component of the consultation and they developed and distributed surveys with their peers and we came back to them with a lot of questions. Uh, we had in the end 835 young people aged 12 to 25 participate in this consultation either directly or through surveys. Cool. And Lisa was it just young people that were engaged in that plan and putting it together? No it wasn't Steve. The schools in Bass Coast have been involved in the process from supporting the engagement of young people to participating in focus groups and completing surveys. We also asked parents and carers to get involved. All up, we had 121 parents and carers participate and 59 people who represent the service providers in the region. And that was all on top of 835 young people who were involved. Um, From this, a youth Facebook page was also developed to support our consultation process. And that's grown into a platform for youth engagement. certainly has. And it's proven to be a a really amazing way to reach that audience. And the address for that Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Bass Coast Youth. Is that right, Lisa? Yes, that's correct, Steve. So we know that young people use a lot of digital media in ways to communicate and engage. And even in February, like, you know, the stats on YouTube were 14 million active users in Australia. Can you tell us a bit more about digital media that we did to engage with that audience? 
I sure can. So we started our Facebook page to consult and engage with young people, but since then we've used it as a platform to continue speaking with young people and allowing their views to be heard. So most recently we've developed a digital media series, which is a snapshot addressing six issues, six of the key issues that young people raised in the consultation. So there are issues such as family violence, family issues, where to go for help, bullying, youth voice, and a bit about the environment as well. Great. So now that we've got this plan adopted, what happens now? Well, we recently had a meeting with Department of Health and Human Services about strengthening the service system in Bass Coast, and we're looking at our youth leadership model and opportunities for young people to have a voice in issues that affect them. So the process of consultations really strengthen council's relationships with service providers, particularly our schools, and the development of networks, projects and initiatives has resulted in this. Council's very grateful for the input on the development of the youth action plan from service providers, young people, schools, parents and carers and they're certainly a very passionate group and it's helped to make this an authentic engagement process where the voice of all stakeholders have been heard with a resounding message of commitment to help build on outcomes for young people. That's terrific. Well thanks so much for joining us today Lisa. You're welcome Steve. Now that's all we've got time for this week. As always if you have any questions or need more information about anything we've mentioned give us a call on 1300 B Coast that's 1300 226 278 or 0356 71 2211 and keep up to date on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Bass Coast Shire or follow us on Twitter at Bass Coast and we'll catch you next week for your more council news. The Bass Coast Shire Council Report is broadcast on Tuesday mornings at 9.30, Thursday afternoons at 4.30 and on Saturday mornings at 10 on your community station 3MFM. Audio and transcript is also available from our website, basscoast.vic.gov.au.